chick a man be ballin'. Uh, these chick pigeon toes, some of them be crawlin'. Spark FM. Oh, gosh. It's me again. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. 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 You're listening to Saucy and Friends in the morning with Miss Hot Sauce, Miss Tony, and Rockstone Triss. Yeah! Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a Monday. It is a Monday and it feels like a Monday today. It to does. It, it's just Mondaying, right? It just feels yeah. kind of bluish. The year feels more like, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, mom. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, fine. <laughs> Well, it's not working. Uh, you can't hear nothing. It's plugged in. Try the purple cord. The purple one. Ooh. There we go. There, there we, go. we go. Now we're cooking with oil. Go, Tristan. Go, Tristan. Cooking with cheese. Mm-hmm. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Spark FM Online, number one for urban and Caribbean music. We are here. We are here. Yeah! And we are... Here's some more. It is a fine, fine beginning of the week, I believe, I guess. Uh, quick check-in. Thanks, Tony. How you doing? Oh, <laughs> I am good, but I... Somebody, please, people, throw up some good... Um, I'm tired. I'm tired on so many levels. I'm so many... I'm so many let me tell you what. No, I'm not gonna get I'm it. trying to figure Tell out what me. you're saying. Yes, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired physically. Like I'm tired. You know what I mean? Like I'm. I feel a little run down. Very, very lethargic. I. I don't have any energy. Lethargic. Lethargic. In okay, case it's lethargic. Just like tired. Just tired. Oh. Like run down feeling in general. And then um, I had a great weekend. It was very, very nice. Um, Friday there wasn't much to. Do. I didn't do anything. Saturday I was in bed todos los días because it was pouring cats, dogs, lions, and tigers and bears on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Like, what the heck was that? I was like, this is so much rain. There wasn't no thunder and lightning, though. Did y'all notice that? No thunder and lightning. But it did rain like hell. Um, So that was that. And then I did get up um, in the PM hours. And uh, we attended Scoop's Way 50th birthday bash. I thought she was was coming, Tristan. Which was very I thought she was coming. You said, I'm going. I was going to come. It was very nice. I'll tell y'all what happened. (laughs) <laughs> it was a nice it was a nice event it, it was, was very well it, decorated it and the amount well of friggin food that that man here yeah, that was serving every two minutes oh is my, ridiculous that's what Tony was saying platters and platters and platters of food Pla- food, every food, time food. you turn it's, around it was it bringing out more like food and more people no it was, no it was a lot it was a lot of people oh, and people like to take home food so oh, that yeah. was a very good thing but it was it was it was a packed event it wow. was it was um and it was very nice platinum sounds dj'd our own hot skull was there and um specialist was uh emceeing for a little bit it was cool it was a, it was a nice time people were dressed up it felt like so last night we're talking it felt like remember when we used to have those parties that you looked forward to that you would dress up for yeah. and go to like that so i i, I liked um I like that vibe. So big, um, of course, shout out, happy birthday shout out again to him. And then yesterday was just a super chill day. We took the kids over to the Easter party that the Honduras um, people had over there at Unity. The Boston Honduras Coalition. Coalition. Boston Honduras Coalition (laughs) had over there at Unity, which was very, very nice for the kids. Well decorated, lots of food there too. And those beautiful, beautiful Easter baskets that they had for the kids. That's that's such, it's so good to see people put in effort and do things for our children because, you know, those kids look look forward to that. They do that. Every year, every year, always a free event. Yep, on always Palm plenty Sunday, of food. right? Uh huh. Always the plenty of food. Easter. And you know, I didn't realize yesterday was Palm Sunday. Yeah, so it was Palm Sunday yesterday. This is the beginning. Yesterday was the beginning of Holy Week. So I thought about this yesterday. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I'm conflicted with this. Oh no. I thought about going back to church. Hallelujah. But not to go to church for church. I hate black church. I hate church in general. Which mm-hmm. church? I hate black to church to? too because I have, that's all more. Go to a nice white church? No, I, I don't like the black church because they need to teach that God is a black man and they, they don't do that. Mm. I don't feel like they teach God is any color man. I know. Mm. The white people do though. You see, oh. you see what white God look like. I don't think they 
they teach that, I think that's just the they picture that they it, have. But they, they don't show, be like, show, white Jesus. They, they don't show, <laughs> do show us. They yeah. show, do show us. And I mean, but black ch- black churches be having black Jesus in there too, though. Yeah, no, but they need to be teaching. The, but then, no, that's a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. But um, I do. I want to go just more for the network. Yeah. Just for the professional network, you know, if you're not if you're not in a particular circle, you won't have a professional network. Mm-hmm. And I figure the next place to get that is the church. Um. So yesterday, I mean, this weekend I did nothing. Um. Not too much. On um, Friday night, I ended up in Unity. Oh, how was, how was that? that? Friday night live. Well, well, let me how you let me tell you how I how I ended up in Unity because mm-hmm. I thought that the party was on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> what party? Scoops? Scoops party. That was on Friday night. So And you thought it was at Unity? No, no. I knew where it was, but I got dressed Friday night thinking uh-huh. that the party was and then it was like, Oh no, the party's not tonight, it's tomorrow. I was like, Oh, okay, well, you know what? I went to my people's crib and then I was like, this is not going to be a repeat of last week where I got dressed two nights in a row and went nowhere. Mm-hmm. So I hit one of my homegirls up. She told Except me she was in Unity. a little Booga Sugar adventure last, last week that you went on. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I went to, um, I went to uh, Unity and boy, can I tell you, I felt out of place. Really? Why? What? The young like, crowd? Well, young, young, yeah. Young, yeah. young, young, young crowd. Uh-huh. And... Um, you know, it's just, I was in there for maybe about an hour. I left there about one o'clock and that was it for me. And then on Saturday, I went to Nikan. That was pretty dope. How was that? Nikan was dope. It was kind of interesting to walk into the um, the Heinz Convention Center and the whole place smelled like weed. Oh, you know? really? Uh-huh. Met a whole bunch of people down there. That was cool. That was a good event. Mm-hmm. You know, that was it. That was all. That was my weekend. And then, of course, yesterday was the Easter party. Mm-hmm. Oh, you I, went to the Easter party? Of course. Of I didn't course. see you. My mom said she saw yeah. you yesterday when she went in. I saw well, her. I, I went was, in for two seconds. I didn't see you. You know, I was in in and out doing my adult thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I do want to show y'all this one video that I took from yesterday, though. That was quite funny with the children that were doing the um the Easter egg hunts. Did, uh, why did maybe CK missed it? Because he was like, Oh, mommy, I got some dollars in here. <laughs> some dollars in one of my eggs. I was like, Did you do an Easter egg hunt? Nope. I was like, oh. No, it was like they had an Easter hunt. They had an egg hunt, but I didn't find any. So check this out. Y'all look at the screens. I'll look at this for everybody. They ain't looking. Let's start it from the beginning. Y'all are passing them. They ain't looking. Do y'all see the Easter egg? On the floor right there? Look, right here. Look. The car. Oh, right there. <laughs> look, look, look. I ain't looking. <laughs> he ran right back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's it. Y'all are passing. <laughs> it's out there. Mm-hmm. They be so excited to just find it that I don't feel like they look for it. Like no, it should be dope. right here. If I'm gonna look for it, it should be in my face. Yeah. But it was in its face. Uh, that's that's funny. But it was nice. I'm looking forward to um the weather warming up, man. I see. I walked out my house today and I saw that the tulips look like they're getting ready to bloom. Okay, Tulip. And then the um the um what do they call the cherry blossoms? That event is coming up soon. Um, all the nice natives are interested and excited about the cherry blossoms that are going to be uh, coming up this spring. I love a cherry blossom. There was some cherry blossom sneakers one time that one of my friends had purchased with a cherry blossom hoodie. Oh, that sounds nice. It was very nice. It was some special editions one. That's why I always remember Shelly Cherry Blossoms. That's good. Don't they have Cherry Blossoms by the White House? Yeah. Yes. I remember Cherry Blossoms because, you know, back in the day, I used to rock that Japanese Cherry Blossom fragrance from Bath & Body Works. Did you? Like everybody else. Like everybody else. You had to have <laughs> Japanese Cherry Blossom and the Cucumber Melon. That's when you was. Oh, I hated that that's smell, when you y'all. Was hip. I hated that era with the girls wearing them spritzes and sprays. It's still my error. school bus. I used to not smell my school bus all over again. It just smelled like. It's <laughs> just, just having sh- bad memories of the yeah. school bus. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm bus. sorry. To Good morning to everybody checking in. Good morning, <laughs> Opal. Good morning, DJ Live. I heard you was looking cute this weekend. Y'all should have seen Ooh. my baby. She was looking so cute. I was like, look at that. My baby. Good morning, Luana. <laughs> and good morning, Super Roy. If you guys are joining us right now, go ahead and give it up a share. Give it up a share. Let us know what we are listening. Let us know. Let people know 
what y'all are listening to right now in the morning. Uh, yes, Chinese slippers. Oh, see, I remember they need to bring back a little Chinese slipper. Now that I'm of age, I think that I could. Um, no, don't bring I think I'll bring those. I think there would be. A, I'd have one in every no, color don't bring to those. match all of my sweatpants. Don't how many? How many Chinese slippers did you have? I maybe. Ha- I didn't even get into the Chinese slipper phase. I probably had like a. I think I had one black one that I got from the dollar store. Oh. Why was, I didn't that, have, why was but, that a thing? But now I would like the Chinese slipper, and I would like multiple Chinese slippers. Man, I had I had a gold one that had multicolored flowers on top. Wow. That was a fancy Chinese <laughs> slipper. I think that would cost three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that was expensive Chinese. They was expensive. <laughs> the Boy. Top of the line Chinese slipper. I had yeah. There. Boy, I tell you, those good and back in the days was a good time, I tell I you. Know, and Chinese slippers is good. Like, think about it. Chinese slippers is good for after the club when you can't, you know, when you got to take your shoes off. Just mm. slide a Chinese slipper on. Man, <laughs> yeah. bring them back. Bring them back. Because after wearing a little boot last on Saturday, my back ain't recovered yet, child. Boy, I tell oh, you. You know my hip be going out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so people, we're about to get the show started. If you are just tuning in right now, go ahead and give it up a share. I didn't do too much this weekend either. Um, we went to Scoop's Way yesterday. Me and my sister had a little lunch dinner yes. um, at our nice place, and that was very nice. And then, Where's you know, nice so... Place? Um, I don't want nobody going there, so oh, I can't say it. It's not even a it's not even a fancy place. It's just down the street. I don't want people to get no ideas and start going there and seeing motherfuckers. Yeah, you gotta keep your places secret yeah. sometimes. That's the only one that I'm stingy with. Because I just like <laughs> to go there and have work sometimes, have a glass of wine. A nice glass of wine. I like a glass of wine. Anyhow, yeah, people what did we have um poinsettias yesterday. Poinsettias? The little drink that we had. Oh yes. It was a, a cranberry. Mimosa. Mm -hmm. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Got me nice and drunk. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, people, let us get into this show. Uh, Saucy and Friends start now. Before we get into it, well, I'll do that after. Go for it. No doubt. doubt. By show. You're you're listening to Saucy and Friends in the morning with Miss Hot Sauce, Miss Tony, and Rockstone Triss. Call Spark Spark FM FM at 617-272-3387. The the, the all-new Spark FM. Spark FM. Log on to sparkfmonline.com. Advertise your business brand or music on Spark FM. Contact us at sparkfmonline.com for more information. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today is March 25th. It's the last week of March, right? Yeah, this is the last week of March. And in this last week, we have decided that we are going to do a little woman pop-up series uh, for Women's History Month. Today, we have our lovely friend, Shanita, a.k.a. Naughty Girls from Salvage Roots Hair Salon, who just celebrated her five-year anniversary. So she'll be in here talking to us about entrepreneurship, all of the plans, things that she's learned, and then just overall life as a entrepreneur and as a woman in business here in Boston, Massachusetts. So we'll keep you updated tomorrow. We have a couple more guests today. We'll be uh, later on in the week. We'll be talking to Nicole uh, Flynn, not your average yoga teacher. We'll also be talking to Carmen. She is your uh, getting healthy with Carmen. There's so many people that we'll be talking to this. This week and we want you guys to just enjoy them and have a great time because it is the end of Women History Month and we want to make sure that we go out with a bang so we'll be doing our little series here. Again, it is about 9.20 a.m. on 3-25-2024. Let's figure out what this, uh, what it's going to be today. Considerable cloudiness, high 43 degrees, winds in the northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. It's going to be low tonight at 35. It's just been friggin' cold to be spring. Yeah. It's been really obnoxiously cold for absolutely no reason to be spring. Right. And if the groundhog lied to us, do what y'all got to do to it because Pocketalky is not doing the right job. Somebody said that groundhog must be a man because he just be saying things and just lying. Lying. Just lying. That Mm. groundhog is a ghost. It, it is Pakatani. He is very old. doing. He, he needs to sit down. <laughs> he needs Sex. to sit down because why are you up here telling people all of this for and it's not true, right? Yes. 
Boy, I tell you, boy, I tell you. Um, let's get into the show. Let's get into our roundaway news. I don't know. I'm a little discombobulated today. I feel confused in my brain. Like, I feel like there's a lot of things swirling around in my brain. So let me focus. Get into the show and around the way news. A child was hit by a car in South Boston and rushed to a hospital with serious injuries. I do believe that the child did not survive, correct? Not. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're going to get into this story. Let me just give you a little uh, give you a little head piece of it. Oh, it's not there. Okay. I don't know. I do have the um, autumn ticket. Yes, um, I do have another one as well. I hate when we... Okay, here we go. Little girl is latest Boston pedestrian fatality and crash outside the Children's Museum. Damn, in front of the Children's Museum? Drew Caradis reports a four-year-old died at Congress and Sleeper Streets after being hit by the driver of a Ford F-150. Damn, that's a big truck. Police responded to the scene around 5, 10 p.m. and not long after called in the BPD homicide and fatal accident reconstruction units. Caradis says the driver remained on scene. He posted a photo showing police evidence markers by the pickup's rear wheels. Officers from three nearby police districts were also called in to help transport witnesses for interviews by homicide detectives at BPD headquarters. Here's the clip. To the hospital with life-threatening injuries. This happened right by the Boston's Children's Museum and the Yawkey Center for Children and Learning. This is a very busy area, high foot traffic area. Lots of parents with kids walking around. This area, Congress Street, is shut down to traffic cars are being diverted as police investigate both sleeper and congress streets are taped off right now we are told that the driver did remain on scene police have been taking pictures of this lexus es350 in the ford f-150 pickup truck right now we don't know the age of the child who was taken to mass general hospital and so far no charges have been reported on the driver the incident remains under investigation and we are told police will provide an update soon just a sad situation live in south boston i'm paul burton wbc news oh uh, that is yeah that's awful in front of the children's museum that's just a that's that's a terrible situation i wonder what happened but i guess as we um as we move along in in the week, we'll probably learn more of that. We'll keep you guys updated. A truck carrying thousands of pineapples rolls over in Westford. Oh, pineapples. <laughs> Get it, pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> um, so I'm trying. I don't. None of the stories that were put in this morning are of working order. So, okay, here we go. Uh, state police report an 18-wheeler rolled over in the rain at I-495 northbound in Westford this morning, spilling lots and lots of pineapples and forcing the shutdown of two lanes. I wonder what happened. Oh, damn, that is a lot of pineapples. This morning's troopers responded to a 495 northbound in Westford for a two-vehicle crash that caused a tractor trailer to roll over on its side of the road. Driver was taken to Lowell General with minor injuries. The truck was hauling thousands of pineapples, many of which spilled into the bush. Oh no, that is terrible. So then what do you do? Did people gotta wait for their pineapples after that? I think that I think they gotta go get a new shipment now. Cause is it like what if it was carrying drugs? Cause I feel like I've seen this in like uh, Queen of the South or something like that. You know, uh, makes That's me crazy. Nervous. That's a whole lot of. Pineapples. That's a whole lot of pineapples. That is a whole lot of pineapples, and I like me some pineapples if you know what I mean. <laughs> Mm, tough crowd. <laughs> Wowzers. All right, all right, all right. In some terrible news, the last remaining Friendly's restaurant in Boston has closed. Oh, no. The one in Where, Brockton? It was in Brockton? I know there was a Friendly's going on um, Randolph, Brockton, that, that line right there. Main Street. The one on Main Street closed? Yes. Well, I thought the last remaining one was in Rentham. No. Oh, but they took that one out a long time ago, huh? I never had friendlies a day in my life. Maybe hmm. one time. Maybe one time. What's that sure to you? Large. Okay. Large. Um, yeah, that I Friendlies was good. Friendlies had a nice burger. Friendlies had a good French fry. And if you were into Sundays, that's where you could get your nice friendly Sundays. And that's so sad. The sole remaining location of a regional chain of restaurants and ice cream shops inside Route 128 has shut down. According to a source along with the Boston Globe article, Friendlies at Logan Airport. 
in East Boston is no longer in business. I never knew there was a Friendly's in Logan Airport. Um, with this being the last outlet with the Boston city limits and the closest remaining Friendly's in the city being in Norwood, Peabody, and Weymouth, the only standalone location inside Route 28, closed in the fall of 2019, with that one being in Stoneham. Friendly's, which is headquartered in Wilbraham, there's a Wilbraham in Massachusetts. Okay. That's crazy. Has first established at Springfield in 1935. The website for the company can be found at friendliesrestaurant.com. So where are any more friendlies? Are they anywhere else in the world just, or is it just, just Massachusetts? It's just not in Boston. Oh. It looks like the closest one is in Legacy Place. No. Really? There's no friendlies. In oh, that's the friendly toast. Yeah. I want friendlies. No, there's no more. Friendlies in Norwood. No, this is oh, done. Oh, this is the one that was closed? Yeah, there's no more. The one that was closed was in East Boston. Oh, yeah, wow. there's no more. There's, they're all done. They're all wow. done. There's no more in Massachusetts, period. No you guys used to frequent all? friendlies, everybody? Anybody used to frequent friendlies? I've been there quite a few times. We used to go there like after church sometimes. Or there's when we no go to rent them. No more. That's what the article is about, Tristan. The last remaining friendlies restaurant in Boston has closed. Hey, what are we gonna do now? You guys wasn't patronizing it the way that you should be. <laughs> God damn it. I got I got lactose intolerance. Oh. <laughs> Magnetic night. Okay, so this one was we've been talking about Brockton a lot. And I felt the need to put this story in here so that we can figure out what is going on uh, with Brockton. Magnetic night, Brockton High School drama students win state championships. Brockton High School drama students are state championships. 42 students competed and performed the 1982 comedy Charlie's Aunt against 100 schools across the state and took home the hardware. It's so exhilarating. I've never get used to it, said Emily Caballon, a senior at Brockton High School. Dozens of Brockton High School students woke up state champions on Sunday. My whole body was shaking. I almost passed out, said Stephen Nascarmono, a senior at the Brockton High School. Is there a video for that? I want to see their yeah. excitement. They outperformed 100 other schools with their production of Charlie's Aunt. It's about two young men who are at a dormitory and they want their two lady friends to come join them at the dorm, but they need a chaperone in order to have these two women. And unfortunately, their chaperone couldn't make it. So they dress up one of their buddies as an older woman um, and then they go from there. I'm We're looking for, for the clip. Right. Hogan said that there were three rounds in the Massachusetts. What's wrong with this video? It's playing. Oh, it's not uh, the same. Yeah, that's not it. Hogan said that there was three rounds uh, in the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild competition with fewer schools moving on each time. He said the cast only had five minutes to set up and take down the set or they would be disqualified. He said hearing Charlie's aunt announce that the winner Saturday night was a pinch, a pinch me moment for him and the company. It was just a magnetic night. It was electric. It was exciting. It was pure joy. It was what we needed right now, he said. I know with so much bad news coming out of Brockton, mm -hmm and so many things happening um it's really great to hear them be happy about something and win something that was really dope um oh well, here goes the clip right here drama club take their acting skills seriously while having the time of their lives i love it it's like a family it's really like such a welcoming environment and ever since i've stepped foot into this program i've just felt loved and appreciated Seniors Amelia, Jaden, Gianna, and Steven are among 42 other students rehearsing for the Massachusetts Educational Theaters Guild State Competition. And Jack, I'd scold you properly, but I'm not your mother quite yet. Oh. The play they're performing is called Charlie's uh, Aunt, mother? the 1892 farce. Yes. I love how much fun it is. It just keeps going, and it's just joke after joke after joke. Levity that's needed for a school that's been in the spotlight because of violence and safety concerns, and even calls from some school committee members for the National Guard to be brought in. The drama club always brings a light onto the school. It's just such a positive environment, and it always shines a bright light. I'd say it's very needed. You're my leaders, and that's what I want. You know, I want you to bring that that drive and that motivation. and that. One of the reasons why the club has been so successful year after year is because of its teacher, Robert Hogan, former Brockton graduate and now director. I think there's a lot of heart in this group of, of kids that we're working with. Um, 
You know, they're sensitive, they're compassionate, they work collaboratively together. Over the past 11 years, the Drama Club have been finalists in the state competition nine times, took home the title in 2019. I have a lot of hope in this crew, this team. Everyone has a lot of heart and dedication, so I really think we can make it all the way to finals again this year. So glad These to students you. love being on stage, not only because it creates a sense of camaraderie and family, but they're also building within themselves confidence, which will stay with them for the rest of their lives. It's really helped me grow a lot. It's because it motivates me to do even better because I always want to be the best actor and performer that I can be. Hogan wants his students to know they're making a difference. They make this city proud and that they are champions. I'm singing. And that's something to applaud. In Brockton, I'm Paul Burton, WBC News. This is dope. I'm glad that they're able to, despite everything that they're going through, they're able to go through that. They're able to get some good and then work. win such a great competition at that like beat out a hundred other schools wow it just got real lightheaded wow <laughs> whoa Jeez. wow take, take was it. i upside down for that take, long take it down. that's take crazy it down. <laughs> um <clears throat> i don't know where miss tony went is she okay Yep, she's okay. Okay. New England dig out frolic and snow with major overnight storm. Oh, no. New Englanders dig out frolic and snow after major overnight storm. As a major weekend winter storm hit the region, New Englanders woke up to mix of snow and freezing rain. that fell overnight into Sunday with areas north and west of Boston receiving the highest snow totals. Snowflakes or a mix of wintry raindrops continue to fall at a steady clip with Forecasters predicting any rainfall um, will freeze up and become snow after 1 p.m. when highs drop into the mid-20s. Go to, go right ahead. She looks fun. Responders and utility crews, but the work's not over yet. Lots of road closures and wires down all across the state. Downed branches, trees, and power lines leaving thousands in Barnstead and Stratford in the dark for hours. Most people in both towns still without power well into this afternoon. Stratford police had a close call when a tree clipped the hood of their cruiser while they were out on a call. Luckily, it missed the two officers inside the vehicle. No injuries. That's what we want. A large portion of 126 was shut down on Parker Mountain Road due to some downed power lines, also causing headaches for drivers. Most of the roads have been opened at least to one lane, but we still have several roads that you can't get down. But crews are out working on it right now and uh, trying to get things back on track. All right, so I'm, I'm glad that we didn't have to deal with any of that. Um, we did have that nasty rain that happened the other day. Hey, we did have that nasty rain that happened the other day, Saturday. That's where I spent most of my time walking around in the damn rain, up and down the goddamn street, trying to get somebody to pee. But, you know, it's what it is. Um, I'm glad that it wasn't snow because snow is something I don't do well. I don't do snow ill. Um, with that said, people, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back in a few moments with our national and world news. Keep it locked right here. Spark FM online. You are enjoying the miracle of radio. Radio. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. FM. JP Morgan Chase is making a global commitment to break down barriers to drive inclusive economic growth all over the world. We believe there is a pressing need to help more people move up the economic ladder. That is why we are investing in communities and people to create an economy that works for all because no community should be left behind. Right here in Boston, we're focusing that work in Dorchester, Roxbury, and Mattapan, among other neighborhoods on improving financial health. These efforts aim to address the key drivers of the racial wealth divide head on. We're here to empower individuals, families, and small businesses by connecting them to the tools that build generational wealth and and a long-lasting legacy. Chase is investing in Boston. Chase is investing in you. Visit us at the Mattapan Branch at 1617 Blue Hill Avenue, where the team is waiting to help. The war on drugs has harmed millions of people and disproportionately subjected black and brown communities to criminalization and incarceration, disrupting access to resources, education, and support. To learn more about Massachusetts policies and programming, ensuring the legal cannabis industry is equitable and positively impacts communities harmed by marijuana prohibition and enforcement, 
visit masscannabiscontrol.com slash equity. Finally Home is a must-read step-by-step guide that will equip any first-time home buyer with the knowledge they need to confidently make informed decisions. This book provides answers in simple and clear terms to most, if not all, of the questions you may have about credit, home ownership, and generational wealth. Finally Home equips the reader with the confidence to be engaged with the home buying process without feeling vulnerable or exploited. Taylor Made Real Estate Easy is not just a catchy hashtag. It is real estate agent and radio personality Taylor Andre's goal. A goal to simplify one of the most challenging processes you will go through as an adult. A goal to educate you properly on credit and teach you the strategies to finding the home of your dream. It is not just a good book or an easy read. It is the secret to a seamless home buying experience. that you can now get a standard Massachusetts driver's license regardless of your immigration status? To get help with your application, a list of all required documents and nearby appointment scheduling, visit mass.gov WFMA. Your license is your way forward, so why not get started today? Register now at mass.gov WFMA or call 857-368-WFMA. Hello, I'm Marissa Jarrett Winoker. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. One in every four Americans is infected with HPV. For many people, the virus hides inside them, and they never develop symptoms. But for others, HPV links directly to cancer. My cancer almost ended my career. It almost ended me. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. The HPV vaccine is recommended for children 11 to 12 years old, and a catch-up vaccine may be an option for teens and young adults. Talk to your doctor. You don't want HPV hiding inside of you. Go to thinkaboutthelink.org to learn more. Together, we can stop cancer before it starts. Spark FM. Weezy boy, make me dance. Daddy, oh, make me dance. Lighting the airwaves. Spark FM. Upacafesa. Join us on Facebook and Instagram at sparkfmonline.com. Turn us up. Tell me how you want it, yeah. Call me and I'm over. Spark FM. Good morning, and we are back. We are back Go ahead and give it up a share if you're just tuning in right now. This is Saucy and Friends in the Morning on Spark FM Online. We are streaming live on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, all of the above. So no matter where you're listening to, either copy and paste the URL or go over and give it a share. Let people know what you listen. Put it in a couple people's DMs. Say, hey, tune into the show right quick. It's fun. I love it. Check my favorite. Out. They are cool. They are wonderful. Yeah. It's time for our national and world news. Miss Tony, what you got for us? Well, I got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Started off with what Catherine Prince. Princess of Wales says in her video. So on Friday, after we left the show, we went home and there was breaking news from Catherine Princess of Wales. Finally. I, for one, have been invested in what's going on with her. I don't really care, but I'm invested in what was going on with her. Why? Because I want to know. Like, it became such a hype that I wanted to know. So Catherine made the announcement that she has been suffering from some sort of cancer um, in the abdomen. We're not quite sure which one it is because there's several that could be there. Um, She said that she's undergoing chemotherapy for it. She says that she's on the rise and she's doing and she's doing well she's got the good support of her family and friends but a lot of people were just like finally we finally know what's going on with her so she did a two minute video that I was released I wanted to take this opportunity oh, yes, to say ahead, thank you personally well, let's play real quick I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding 
whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great thing. care no. of me, for which I'm so grateful. And you don't have to play much. She did say, you know, she, I'm getting well and stronger every day. I'm going to be okay. She is undergoing therapy. Mm -hmm. um, this video's creation means the royals are taking this very seriously. Um, so it says that I think it all goes back to the statement by the late queen, you have to be seen to be believed. Um, someone says the video allowed her to end all the speculation in one go. It couldn't be Photoshop. It couldn't be faked. Um, so that's what we know is going on with Catherine now. The family is asking for privacy, of course, um, while she goes through this. And, you know. You know, it just sucks that if she wanted to keep this under wraps, she couldn't. Yeah, she couldn't. Right. Like, you can't, when you're in that type of limelight, you can't have a personal life. You can't have, you know, your own little secrets. Like, because the paparazzi up there are so pressed for mm -hmm information and for pictures yeah. that you literally just have to be pretty much entertaining shucking and jiving for them at all times like if they don't see you then that's it that's there were so many speculations i mean it was a divorce yeah and uh, it's like, yeah some people were like she must be dead all kinds of mm -hmm. things going on um i still but, don't know who she is but uh you know <laughs> I, I say that jokingly but uh it's kind of unfortunate that it did have to take this turn yeah so I, but i hope that this is a smack in the face for the paparazzi because they've been they trolling this whole story they don't yeah. care now i feel like all that's gonna do is get them more thirsty for more information they're gonna want to know the diagnosis they're gonna want to know every time she leaves chemo she, they're gonna want to know why she was throwing up this morning after chemo like you know like it just i feel like it's I, never gonna stop i pray after this statement they just let her recover well, we, well I, what i learned from watching the henry and megan documentary on netflix is that kensington palace has its own Mm -hmm. um, its own paparazzi staff and its yeah. own like news unit or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that they pretty much control what happens or what mm -hmm. gets released. So I think that, you know, like it's it. Unfortunately, they do have to say something all the time. Like they said, the queen said you have to be seen to be believed. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, but I think they're going to have it under some somewhat under control for what what they allow to be put out there. Um, for her but you know we, we know now that she has a diagnosis and there's a lot of there's a lot of mixed feelings about that i've heard karma i've heard all kinds mm. of things and i'm like Why well, karma yeah man what's she oh, do oh, for because of the because of the palace in yeah general. because of the palace in general yeah. just and, and and that's not her fault personally yeah, yeah, right. but you know she falls into where she she get in where she fit in yeah. right so unfortunately she gonna be catching strays because of that mm. um so that's that with her ecuador's youngest mayor found shot to death along his alongside a staffer what the hell I know, like, what is that? They only shooting mayors. Yes, Brigitte Garcia and a staffer were found shot dead in a car early, uh, early Sunday, said police in South American country, which wow. is in the grips of a wave of violence that authorities blame on drug trafficking. National police said they were investigating the deaths of Garcia, the 27-year-old male of San Vicente, and Jairo Lur, his communications director, after the discovery of their bodies in the province of Manabi. Both had suffered gunshot wounds, police said in a statement. Later on Sunday, police said that the gunfire had come from within the car, which was rented, and they were tracking the vehicle's GPS system. Garcia belonged to former President Rafael Correa's Citizen Revolution Movement Party. Correa and Luisa Gonzalez, the party's presidential candidate in the recent elections called Garcia's killing an assassination on social media platform X. I've just found out they've assassinated our fellow mayor of San Vicente, Brigitte Garcia. I have no words. I'm in shock. Nobody is safe in Ecuador. Nobody. Garcia is the latest political figure in the city, to, uh, in the country to be killed following the assassination of president candidate Fernando Villavincino last August. Yeah. yeah. Villa Vincenzo, a, a, uh, a vocal critic of corruption and organized crime, was killed while leaving a campaign event two weeks before the election. Wow. President Daniel Noboya declared a state of emergency in January and a spike in violence that saw armed men invade a TV station during a live broadcast. Noboa also designated 22 Jeez. criminal groups as terrorist organizations. Imagine if somebody came in here and terrorized us because we was doing <laughs> news broadcasts. That's yeah, crazy. That's crazy. What's going on with Ecuador?
Ecuador. Y'all got to be careful. Them Ecuadors don't don't be playing. Not the Ecuadors. Them Ecuadors. I'm telling you, Ecuadorians. Central American gangs ain't, ain't because to be played. It, you know when I hear things like this, it <clears throat> literally reminds me of all of the shows and movies that you watch yeah. about like drug cartels mm-hmm. and how they yeah. pretty much lead and oversee the land. And as soon as you step in the wrong direction, then off with your head yeah like that's scary yeah that is very very wait, scary wait, I have, oh let's I have see video i want to see when that they came and uh infiltrated the radio station that's crazy yeah that is crazy you it it remind like depending on how this goes it kind of reminds me of when the preacher what was it the gangster what was it, oh, the the flossy flossy preacher the preacher in Brooklyn. In, oh, uh, oh 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 uh, the bling pastor the bling pastor uh-huh. <laughs> when he, he, he when he was doing his sermon and they mm-hmm. came through there That's and true. tried to hold them, or will hold him up and put a gun next to his baby's face. Look at this, all right, y'all, y'all. This is uh, Ecuador gangs infiltrating during the live broadcast. Oh, jeez. What are they shooting? Jeez, no way. Okay, that is very mm, scary. I'm right. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. very, very that's scary. Wild. What the hell was that? <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, more bad news. Russia says suspects in the Crocus Concert Hall attack detained uh, as death toll rises to 137. So this, this was in Russia, right? In Russia on Friday as yeah. well, right? Russian President Vladimir Putin has vowed to punish those behind a deadly attack at a Moscow concert hall that has claimed 137 lives after authorities said the four main suspects were caught near the border with Ukraine. The four men appeared in court on Sunday, all showing visible bruising and injuries and were charged with committing a terrorist act. All four are from this uh, former Soviet Republic of Tajikistan and have been in Russia on either temporary or expired visas. Friday's assault. Is this a story that I have in here? Um, do, you, do, do you see the... Um, I've heard about... Because this Moscow. was a big story. Yeah, show the, yeah. Show, um, the picture of, of the of the suspects. They jacked them up. We have the video right now. Go, oh, yes. Go ahead. Let me see because I want to see. But they, there's a they're, over 133 people were killed when 137 several guns is the death toll now. Burst into the large concert hall and sprayed the crowd with automatic gunfire. Mm-hmm. Russian President Vladimir, Vladimir Putin says authorities have arrested the four suspected men directly involved in carrying out the deadly attack. This is nasty work. What? Yeah, they said that they 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 tore them up in prison. One of them appeared to barely be conscious during the hearing that they had for. Because them. what did you think was going to happen? I, they beat the crap out of them. Let what? me see the pic. Oh, does that that's that first picture right there? They they said, "Oh no, not today." So yeah. why why is it did, it did they burn it down too? Why does it look like that? I don't I don't know. The court court statement said too the suspects accepted their guilt in the assault, though the men's condition raised questions about whether they were speaking freely. There had been conflicting reports and Russian media outlets said that three or all four of the men ad, ad, admitted culpability. The investigators charged uh, a 32-year-old, a 30-year-old, 25-year-old and 19-year-old and I'm not even going to try to say those names. I do want you to try to say those names. Dalergen Marsoyev, Mirsoyev. Saida Krami Racha Balizoda, Sham Sidin Faridouni, and Mak Hamas of Derbyshire. What's it? I'm taking a good name for me. I'm sorry, but. So, okay. How they were this? charged with committing a terrorist, a terrorist attack resulting in the death of others. The offense carries a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. Uh, Moscow's Basmani District Court ordered that the men, all of whom were identified in the media as citizens of Tajikistan, be held in custody until May 22nd, pending investigation. So you, where's the picture of the... I, I can't... There's a picture. There's a good I can't, picture. Oh, well, this is a little bit of the video of one of them sitting down. Is he up? Is he alive? Let me. I have a. Oh, look a, at him. There's a good picture here. Let me find it. Yeah, I don't think he's up. No. I don't think he's conscious. They right beat now. his. They beat his 
He can't even they beat his tongue out. Heavily bandaged after it was reportedly <laughs> severed during his arrest, oh. while another man, uh, as well as having a black eye and a swollen face, also appeared to have some kind of torn plastic <laughs> bag wrapped round his neck. Now, according to uh, Russian to state media, him all out. four men are citizens of Tajikistan. All oh. were charged with committing an act of terrorism, and all will be held in pre-trial detention until at least. May 22nd, Mariam. Dominic, we also know that the Islamic State group is claiming responsibility for the attack. Is mm. Russia accepting that at this point? Yeah. Not really, no, to be frank. Uh, as you say, ISIS uh, has claimed responsibility for, for the attack ISIS. at uh, the Croker City Hall on Friday, which killed more than 130 people. And over the weekend, the group even released graphic footage of these four men uh, opening fire on the crowd inside the concert hall, footage that was posted on the group's Telegram channel. Now, the United States has said the claim by ISIS that it was behind this attack is a credible one, something underlined by US Vice President Kamala Harris over the weekend. And this morning, uh, France's President Emmanuel Macron said that all the signs indicated ISIS was indeed responsible, and he told Russia that it would be uh, cynical and counterproductive to try to blame Ukraine, because that, Marianne, appears to be the narrative that Moscow is pushing. Mm -hmm, no mm -hmm. Russian official has yet acknowledged this claim by ISIS. Indeed, last night, Russia's Foreign Ministry spokesperson uh, Maria Zakharova even called into question uh, Washington's claims ISIS was behind the attack. Mm. And then, of course, over the weekend, during his televised address to the nation, Vladimir Putin didn't mention the group in connection with the attackers, who he claimed were arrested while trying to escape to neighbouring Ukraine, adding that people there were standing by to help them cross the he border. He wants that, to blame Ukraine right. so that he can do something crazy. A yeah. very, very angry response from uh, Kyiv. It has described the claim as absurd, while over the weekend, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky even described Putin as scum uh, for oh. trying to link the attack to Kyiv. Because Vladimir, but, Vladimir Pu Putin looks like he's... He has the right name. It he sounds like, like an puking. evil, yeah. awful, terrible person. Like despicable me. Yeah, like hmm. but the real one. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I actually am terrible as a person. Yeah, like, I, I should not be trusted as a human being. So even though ISIS is claiming the responsibility, we're still gonna blame the Ukraine so that we can go back and bomb something in Ukraine. Because even if they're not for Ukraine, they were on their way to Ukraine. Right. And Ukraine was ready to let them in. Right. Really? What, what an awful situation. Really? Awful, awful situation. That's crazy. If them guys did do that, though, I am very happy that they got they behind beat because for what why did you did do you, that? Why did you do that? But did, like, just did, did they burn it down too? It, it looks like it was burnt down because the whole Coliseum looks like it was on fire. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, and very, very good news. This monster has been taken off of the street. A man arrested in the fatal stabbing of the woman, 19 years old, outside of the Brooklyn Bodega. Oh, blessed be the rock of my yes. salvation. He uh, he turned himself in at good. the advice of his um, attorney. A man was arrested early Friday morning after a 19-year-old woman was fatally stabbed and her twin sister was injured outside of Brooklyn Bodega. Veo Kelly, 20, turned himself in with his attorney present at 8 a.m., sources said. He was charged with murder, assault, and criminal possession of a weapon, according to the NYPD. Kelly was previously identified as a suspect in the stabbing of Samaya, Spain, by authorities. The stabbing happened on Sunday near, uh, last Sunday near 4th Avenue in St. Mark's Place in Park Slope. Kelly allegedly encountered the 19-year-old sisters and got aggressive with them when they rejected his advances. Kelly is accused Hi. of arguing with them. Police said a man the sisters were with got into a fight with the suspect, according to authorities. Uh, that's when Spain was stabbed in the neck and chest. She was taken to an area hospital where she was pronounced dead. Police previously said they had video footage that showed Kelly in the bodega before the stabbing. He was attending a nearby party and believed to be drunk when he went to the bodega. Mm -hmm. Police said Kelly had one prior arrest for robbery. Detectives found Kelly's clothes he was wearing the night of the stabbing in his apartment, mm -hmm. but they did not d recover the knife used, which is crazy to me because they feel like they keep showing it yeah, on the Yeah, I kept news. on seeing the picture. Yeah. Uh, GoFundMe has been created for the for the young lady, and the fundraiser um, has raised. I think at the time that I looked at it, they had raised twenty two of twenty five thousand dollars that they were looking for um, for them. Um, we also know that this young girl, the one that was killed, was defending her sister because he had uh, at first stabbed the sister, and then this one went to go to defend her, and then she ended up being stabbed twice in the neck and in the chest. 
so. would not be right. We have our uh, footage here. Yeah. <laughs> of twins for 19 years of their life. No one deserves to lose a child. She yeah. did not deserve that. A family friend that. here. <laughs> she did not deserve that. That mom will never be the same. Samaya Spain, just 19 years old, stabbed in her neck and chest at this deli in Park Slope, Brooklyn, after a chance encounter with 20-year-old Veo Kelly. Wow. Her twin sister was slashed on her arm. Her dad, Stephen, is lost. Those are his twins. Those are his babies. The parents asking Yvette Ramos, a lifelong friend, to speak on their behalf. Police say Kelly, who had too much to drink, flew into a rage when Samaya would not give him her phone number. She and her sister did not know Kelly, had never seen him before. But to pacify him, she gave him her Instagram right. handle. Mm -hmm. Okay, she don't want to give you her number. She gave you her Instagram. That still don't give a reason to kill her. Delhi owner Mohammed Albahar watched the girls grow up. They and their family frequent his store. We feel really broken hearts, you know. Authorities say Kelly has at least one prior arrest for robbery. He turned himself in this morning at the 7 8 precinct. I spoke with LaShawn, her mom, and she would like to thank the detectives on the case. 7 8 got a good team for homicide, and they did their job. They did their job, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart. That's uh, every. Mm. We didn't show the clip of the mom, but the mom said that she wished that he could um, suffer daily in his cell the way that she suffers in the cell of her mind yeah, every day. Yeah, absolutely, movie. absolutely. It's awful, awful. I awful wonder story. what it makes. How drunk you gotta be? For that to be the course of action, like like you seriously, you at no point do you click in. I know that you could be drunk and that you just don't even know what's happening. You don't know what's going on. I'm but such like a for happy drunk, though. yeah, for this, like <laughs> he didn't want to fall asleep on the corner. Like you, like in your drunken rage, you really kill somebody. Yeah, like your how... life is completely over. And they said, like it's it's not it's so crazy too because they said that she gave him her Instagram handle, yeah. so it's not like she dissed him and said anything bad about mm -hmm. him. So like, you know what I mean? It's like, sad it's, that it's just, that's what you just... even have to do. Right? Right? Right. Like right. that you even have to give somebody your Instagram handle after you already said, I'm, I don't want to give you my yeah. information. I it's, don't think a lot of young men, especially young men, black young men, I don't know. I don't think they know how to really express themselves today. Yeah. Like properly express themselves and handle their feelings. It sounds like <clears throat> it feels like everything is just uh, like something. It also sounds like something was going on at home for him to be able to flip out that easy. I, I just take, think take, he's just you know. wild. He, he's, he's just wild. He's a friggin' hellion. And there's a, there's a thing called male fragility that was is, mm -hmm. is a real, real thing. I, that was a discussion that I was having yesterday. There was a guy, I came across an article yesterday, uh, or a post yesterday from a guy who was like, he only pursues women that pursue him because he doesn't know if women are just being nice to him or and, and he fears rejection. He sounds like a... Exactly. I don't yeah. know what exactly. you just said. Exactly. Because what, what the hell? Exactly. <laughs> I so, only pursue women. I, okay. I posted it on my page, and there were a lot of people who were like in agreement with him, and there were also a lot of people who were like, "He's just a ban," yeah. which is the side that I tend to fall on. And it just sounded like, I mean, "What are you talking about?" Like, for, for the most part, I do get what he's saying. Like, he is not going to go out of his way uh -huh. to mm -hmm. whatever in order to protect his feeling. And I know a lot of people like that. But making such a bold statement, like if that is your what, a, what if make, that's your view, you, then how are you going to get through life? Exactly. That's what, like <laughs> yeah. that is your, how? That's how you view life. One of one of one of my my like <laughs> you know like <laughs> older mature male yeah. friends was just like how how are you gonna pursue if you trying to be pursued? Like that just doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. A lot of men did identify with it. One of my male friends said something about there's married women who will try to pull someone just to see if they still have it. They and I'm do. Like, yeah. yeah. Really? That's yeah, true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Girls, that sounds like me, this lady trying to bag me this whole weekend. <laughs> lady, get away from me. Lady, leave me alone. Yeah. And, she, and I said, really? Is that a scenario that you really encountered? Mm. And that just seems so weird to me. Mm. I don't know. Man, I'm, I'm different, I for, guess. For, I, do, I, do, I do hear a lot of men complain about that. That's why they do religiously wear their, ra their wedding ring. Uh -huh. But some of them also say that the wedding ring seems to be like an attraction mm -hmm, magnet. Mm -hmm. Because women 
Because in the women's mind, uh, there's some women uh-huh. mind. At least this man is committed. He is probably going to, you know, like he's out of. Like I can, no, 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 no. Loyal. It wasn't yeah. about women going after married men. He said ma- women that are married would try to flirt with younger with same, the other guys to try to yeah, try same to get, thing. Uh, like yeah, validation. I want to see if I still got it. Yeah, girl, I still got it. I went out today and this dude tried to hit on me. That is a very, very real Larry, thing. Larry said you can't approach women nowadays. Yeah, Larry. Larry That's not Larry, true. Yeah. Though. Larry you, said that on my post that he, you can approach women. It's just how you do it and the yes. places and times you do yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Say that, Tristan. You gotta go nice place like convention and church. In church. <laughs> church. And you also just have to be respectful. And you can't expect that just because you're nice and you're respectful that she is obligated to speak to you. Uh-huh. Like, some women are just not in that. For different reasons, they might just not be into speaking to people. Period. <laughs> I, I, I'm, and my, the trouble that I'm running into is that I've been meeting I've been meeting men lately. Mm. And, and I meet them and we never even make it to a first date because it's like they want me to, like... I have to like run them down. They want me to send them good morning texts, good morning beautiful texts. Afraid and stuff of like rejection. That. Yeah, and it's just like if I've given you my number and shown interest, we've had conversations, and I've shown you that I'm interested in speaking to you more. What more do you need? But they literally B A N. They literally want good morning beautiful texts from me. B A N. What we supposed to do? Why? Exactly. Why is the but man- the tides have turned. Where these days, a lot of men, especially people that be on social media heavy, get these ideas that if a woman really likes you or wants you, then you must, she must pursue you in order for you to know if, because like Larry said, women are hard to approach or they don't want to be approached. They, that's different women. Men are supposed to be the wooers. The wooers. The wooers. I said, said, I'm a lady. I want to be wooed and pursued. Like, I want to do that. And I don't think that. Some uh, two two of the men on my, on my post, one who's married and one who's who's pretty popular, said something about men have to convince women that they're the ones for them. And I was like, I don't think that that's what it is. Is is pursuing a woman convincing a woman that you want that she should be with you, or is it just showing a woman that you like her and you're interested I, in her? Well, Larry says giving a number just means you want a date. Show interest. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Schneider says women are lazy and show no reciprocation. You do have something like that, too, You though. do. You do. And, and then that's what I don't like is then you see me showing interest and you're like, are you here? Yeah. Are we here? Are yeah. you? Are we? Yeah. What's yeah. going on? All and your right. situation is different because you are showing interest and you are, are you like, I, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. yeah. I, I do show interest. I do show interest, but I I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I'm going to put, put myself out there. I had plans. To, we were spo- I was supposed to go out with someone on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. And we spoke on Friday. Everything was cool. Da, 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 da. I didn't hear from him all day Saturday. And I usually get a good morning text from him. Mm-hmm. No good morning text. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't send a good morning text. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't hear from him all day Saturday. So I'm like, okay, what's going on did here? Did you hit him up like, hey, we still going out? I did not. Mm-hmm. I did not because this is the second time that this, but, this has happened with and, this person. And, you, and I don't believe that you should have to. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the way, right. I feel like if we have plans and you are interested in going as the man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, as the win, you should say something. I think he got one strike left. No, he don't got no strike no left. Oh, he got no more strikes <laughs> no, left. No, 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 Second no, no, no. time that he's oh, done that. Okay. No, 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 no. So and so, uh, I went on a delete. I went on a blocking spree last yeah. night. Like oh. not even delete it, deleting. I blocked oh. many people out of my phone last night because I don't have time to waste. I'm 46 <laughs> years Hello. old with a son. Say Come that. with me, correct? Say or that. don't or don't bother coming because I don't have time for your foolishness. I'm not. I'm tired of sending. 13 people, Good. Mo- this is how I'm doing this morning. Mm-hmm. Stop it. Nope. We gonna Stop. Have- Where are we going to eat? <laughs> Where, what are we going to eat at? <laughs> what are we doing? We're going to have a 45 and up convention. Exactly. Like, seriously, because this is, I'm, I'm too old for this. But I also said to d- yesterday when I, when I was sitting with Danielle, I said, you know what? I think that women in their 40s probably should not date. I think that women in their 40s and 50s, really? if you're single in your 40s and 50s, don't date. Don't do it because you're not going to get anything except for games and foolishness, which, which is what I've been inspired you don't think experiencing. Wait until you're 60, meet you a nice <laughs> man who is done with foolishness too, and y'all live out the last two years of your lives together. The because last this, two? We only can live to 62? The, the foolishness that we have to encounter as 40-plus women is ridiculous. I am very vocal mm-hmm. about my feelings. 
I communicate very, very well. I tell you how I feel. I tell you what it is that I like, what I don't like. I say, to, I've, I have, I've had to say to men, I've had to say to men, I'm a woman. I like to be pursued and wooed. Mm-hmm. I've had to say that. That is foolishness yeah. in and of itself. So I think for now I'm I'm done. Uh, we're gonna ki- we're gonna continue on this conversation later uh, <laughs> because we could go we can stay Larry, we can park Larry, here. get your violin and get get these get these nuts because just because I I don't want to hear your foolishness at all. So we'll get. <laughs> <laughs> we got to have a panel discussion. Oh boy, I tell you, it would be, it would be, oh, I miss Henny and Hot Wing live days. Uh, what else do we have here? Because we got to move it along. Oh, what? Oh, I'm just upset. I don't know how we owe because of the man. Because of the, because uh, not the male fragility. Because of male fragility. Killing that baby girl. Uh, what else do we have here? Two Holland American crew members die after an incident on the cruise ship. The crew members, what they was doing, turning up. On the cruise ship in the Bahamas, the cruise line said in a statement that it was deeply saddened by the incident. So two crew members on a Holland American cruise ship died during an undisclosed incident in the ship's engineering space. Y'all not going to tell us? They was fighting each other. That's what's happening. They was fighting. They was fighting and somebody stabbed somebody else with a bitch ball. They died on the Half Moon K in Bahamas, Holland American said on uh, Friday in a statement. The incident happened the day, just the same day. All of us at Holland America are deeply saddened by the incident and our thoughts and prayers are with the team members, families at this difficult wow. time. The safety, security, and welfare of all our guests and crew are the company's absolute priority. Details about the incident have not been released. Y'all can't, I, these, these kind of articles I do not like. Me either, because what happened? Right, you can't just, two people died in an undisclosed incident. We can't tell you any information because we're still investigating. Mm-hmm. So then don't put out the article until you can give more information. Exactly. Just know that two Stop people died. Stop trying to be fit first all the time. Exactly. Or they should have a section where it's like, this is the stories that we're working on. Developing we, stories. We want you to know. Yeah, develop. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. These are developing snor- stories just in case y'all want to touch on it. But other than that. Ooh. Nah. The FBI tells passengers of the Alaska Airlines flight that lost a panel. They might be crime victims. The yes. FBI. Well, yes. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> yes. That's a crime. <laughs> that um, that they, they victims of crime. I'm contacting you because we have identified you as a possible victim of crime, a victim specialist from the federal agency. Agency Seattle office wrote in letters, which passengers received this week. This case is currently under investigation by the a- by the FBI. The plane was flying 16,000 feet over Oregon on January 5th when the panel blew out, leaving a gaping hole in the this side. This is another Boeing? This is a Boeing, yep. Oh, fuck. The rapid loss of cabin pressure caused oxygen mass to drop from the ceiling and suction as air rushed from the hole exerted first pe- force people on people inside the plane. Pilots were able to land safely in Portland, Oregon, and none of the 171 passengers and six crew members was seriously injured. The investigators say it appears that four bolts used to help secure the panel were missing after the plane was worked on at a Boeing factory in Renton, Washington. I don't want to be... Are, uh, are all the planes Boeing? I'm, I'm, That's what I said. What I is don't that? Don't any other fakes and models? I don't want to hear nothing else about a bow, a narrow, nothing. A bow or an arrow? Is there any other make of airplane? Because <laughs> I know there's different models of Boeing, but is there any other? What is? What's the know. other brand? Let's look. All we ever hear about is the Boeing. All we hear about is Boeing all the time. Of yes. airplanes. Mm-hmm. Boeing. We are researching. Y'all better. So there's the Boeing's. Them. There's Embraer. Never heard of Gulfstream it. Gulfstream Airspace. Oh, I've heard of Gulfstream. Bombardier. Bombardier. The Cirrus. Lockheed Martin. Uh huh. Lockhead. Ces- oh, Lockhead. Mm-hmm. No, that's Lockheed. Oh, it's Lockheed. No. Uh, it's the Cessnas oh, and Airbus. But Cessnas are only small planes. Small planes, yeah. And Airbuses are huge. So it looks like Boeing's are the Boeing company is an American multinational corporation that yeah. designs, manufactures, and sells airplanes, rotorcraft, rockets, satellites, and missiles worldwide. Oh, oh wow, we are doomed. Yeah. It is the biggest though. Definitely it's the biggest. biggest it's yeah. the largest. It's the most used, right? Mm-hmm. By commercial airlines, I believe. Air but yeah, Airbus, Boeing, Embraer, Bombardier, Airspace, Leonardo Helicopters, Swar Swarovski. Aircraft so Crystal Airplane. <laughs> Russian helicopters and Bell helicopters. Oh. Of subsidiary of Textron. And I don't nah, know. They, they need is. to bring back um what's the the Wright brothers? No, no, oh, wow. no. Bring them back. Not them. <laughs> I don't even want those planes anymore. Then we want the boys. Those are the ones that we had to run and jump off a hill in order <laughs> right. to go on. Yes. <laughs> That's one lost Amelia Earhart. <laughs> I only know about that because my son's studying Amelia Earhart <laughs> right, right, right now. Anyhow. Ooh. She got ate by um, 
She got ate by crabs. You think so? She was she in got, the cu- the Bermuda's Triangle. Yeah, she, they she, think that she got ate by um, what do you call them crabs? The big crab, coconut crab. Oh. Like she fell out and then they ate yeah, her. Yeah, they think that her plane crashed and she got ate she by the coconut crab. She down there crabs. chilling like in Cuba with Asata. Y'all think Amelia <laughs> Earhart ain't around? She's been chilling all these years. Uh, what else do we have? Chick Fil A backtracks on its no antibiotics pledge and blames. You just announced that to me yesterday. Blames projected supply shortages. So wait, what that mean? What do they mean backtracks on it? They gonna antibiotic them or they not gonna antibiotic them? Seems like they, they stopped see. doing, um, they stopped cooking anti, they stopped using chickens that had uh, antibiotics in them in 2019. And then what now? Well, the fast food chain Chick-fil-A uh, backtracked from its decade-old no antibiotics ever pledge intended to help prevent human antibiotic resistance linked to the rampant use of the drugs in livestock production. Instead, the company said in a statement that it will embrace a standard known as no antibiotics important to human medicine, oh. often abbreviated as N-A-I-H-M. <laughs> yes, that is what it would be abbreviated to do. <laughs> Which entails the avoidance of medications commonly used to treat people and limits the use of animal antibiotics in case uh, cases of actual animal illness. Livestock producers have long used antibiotics to boost rapid weight gain in animals such as chickens, pigs, cows, and sheep, improving the profitability of their business. Over the past decade, however, many nations, including the United States, have begun to restrict the practice of evidence mounted that it was contributing to drug resistance and reducing the effectiveness of antibiotics. This is why people turn disease. into vegans. Yeah. Because this is crazy. Yeah. What they say? What you just say? They don't. They still use antibiotics, but not antibiotics that are important to human beings. Like they won't use like a, penicillin. Yeah, penicillin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they won't use any of Stuff them that that, that, that will affect us. Yeah, yes, that would make us immune to it. Yeah, it'll build up our resistance to it, and then it won't be able to help us right, if we're okay. sick. So what kind are they using? So what kind are they using? Mm. I don't know. I'm turning vegan today. I don't know. And you know, Chick Fil A is one of the only people that I kind of trust mm-hmm, as mm-hmm, far as mm-hmm, fast food. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now I don't know about it, but if it do, mm-hmm. said it will. It begin shifting to the new policy in the spring of 2024. A company spokesman added that the move reflects company concerns about its ability to acquire sufficient supplies of antibiotic-free chicken. One of the poultry industry's largest companies, Tyson Foods, said last year that it was reintroducing some antibiotics to its chicken production and removing its no antibiotics ever package labeling. I don't like to to backtrack. Just say, I don't... Just don't say nothing about it. Why you gotta say that? They gotta let you know that they about to start I changing don't wanna the chicken. I know. I know, but don't we? Don't the chickens need to have antibiotics? Well, they're gonna give them the antibiotics for the animals, but not the ones that are essential to humans. That's what it say. Mm. Okay. Well, that's what it is. And don't need fast food. Right. Cook your own food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm oh, get them, Chipotle. I'm going to make one of them big old steaks that I got from your mother this week. Mm. Them things are so... I'm going to eat that for five days. For five, so <laughs> cut it up into little... Cook save, two little save pieces. Me a piece. uh, <laughs> I'm going to make medallions out of that. So With cool. that said, people, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we will hit our first part of our Women's History Month series for this week. So keep it locked. We'll be talking to Naughty Girls, a.k.a. Shanita Clark, out of Salvage Roots here in Beauty. We're going to be right back. Spark FM Online, number one for urban and Caribbean music. You're listening to Saucy and Friends in the morning with Miss Hot Sauce, Miss Tony, and Rockstone Triz. Let's start with the big question. The all-new Spark FM. Massachusetts Social Equity Program creates pathways into the cannabis industry for those most harmed by the war on drugs. The Cannabis Control Commission offers free education and tools to navigate the legal marketplace, including focused training and support on entrepreneurship, management, entry-level employment, and ancillary vendor support. To apply, visit masscannabiscontrol.com slash equity. That's M-A-S-S, cannabiscontrol.com slash equity. J.P. Morgan Chase is making a global commitment to break down barriers to drive inclusive economic growth all over the world. We believe there is a pressing need to help more people move up the economic ladder. That is why we are investing in communities and people to create an economy that works for all because no community should be left behind. 
Right here in Boston, we're focusing that work in Dorchester, Roxbury, and Mattapan, among other neighborhoods on improving financial health. These efforts aim to address the key drivers of the racial wealth divide head-on. We're here to empower individuals, families, and small businesses by connecting them to the tools that build generational wealth and a long-lasting legacy. Chase is investing in Boston. Chase is investing in you. Visit us at the Mattapan Branch at 1617 Blue Hill Avenue, where the team is waiting to help. Finally Home is a must-read, step-by-step guide that will equip any first-time home buyer with the knowledge they need to confidently make informed decisions. What? This book provides answers in simple and clear terms to most, if not all, of the questions you may have about credit, home ownership, and generational wealth. Finally Home equips the reader with the confidence to be engaged with the home buying process without feeling vulnerable or exploited. Taylor Made Real Estate Easy is not just a catchy hashtag. It is real estate agent and radio personality Taylor Andre's goal. A goal to simplify one of the most challenging processes you will go through as an adult. A goal to educate you properly on credit and teach you the strategies to finding the home of your dream. It is not just a good book or an easy read. It is the secret to a seamless home buying experience. Want to give your baby a head start? Get the best protection against flu and COVID-19. Because their immune system isn't fully developed at birth, babies need additional protection. When you get vaccinated while pregnant, it can keep you and your baby from getting sick. As they get older, this can result in more time in school and daycare for them and more productive time at work for you. Vaccines are safe and effective for children as they grow. No matter where you are on your pregnancy journey, flu and COVID vaccines can boost your and your baby's natural defenses and protect your family. Stay up to date with your vaccines. Stay healthy. Talk with your trusted health care provider today. Brought to you by the Boston Public Health. Boston's new home for urban Caribbean music, Spark FM. Spark FM. Playing all your favorite hits from reggae. Spark FM. If you don't mess with the way you want to see your million, we got the Congo long just like the Amazon. Spark FM. I do it all right and all easy. No say we are for win, yeah. Walk with the camera like Jesus. So good. Hip-hop, yeah, we are, we going crazy. R&B, Afrobeats, and much more. Spark FM, Spark FM, FM. Spark FM Online, number one for urban and Caribbean music. We are back. We are back. We are back. It is our time to shine. And like I said, we're going to bring to you guys some lovely... We are going to bring you guys a little mini series of dope A entrepreneurs and women from the community who are really doing big and great things yes. all the time yes. here in Boston. And oftentimes we don't get to highlight those people. So we here at Spark FM will make sure that we do that. Today, a little selfishly, I brought to you guys my bestie, uh, Miss Shanita Clark, AAA Naughty, AKA Naughty Girls of Salvage Roots, located right on Washington Street. And we are doing this because this is what we do here. Yeah. So <clears throat> as she gets prepared, we just found some headphones and things as such. It's such a nice producer. Just get people nice and ready. What a nice guy. <laughs> um, welcome to Spark FM Line again. Shanita, how are you? 
Oh, hello, my best friend. How you doing? I'm so happy to be here. Oh I'm gosh. so happy you're here. Good to have you. Is this your first time here? I'm my here. first time on. Oh, the yeah, air. yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. I did hot honey and hot wings, you know. Yes. Long yeah. Time. yeah. That's where we had to talk some some talk, and we got into. We might get back into that talk um, later on today, but we want to talk to you. So tell us who you are. Describe to us who you are and what you do. Um, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shanita. I am CEO and founder of Salvage Roots Hair and Beauty, Washington Street, Four Corners. Um, I'm Avery's mother. I am a black vegan. I like to cook, you know. Mm-hmm. I, the, the, the time is not there anymore <laughs> right now for those things. But And I also... Um, just started teaching like Pilates. I'm an apprentice instructor. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. That's a pretty <laughs> heavy resume, honey. That's a lot. Ooh. Yes. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Um, so, okay. So, how long have you been in business? Five years. Five years. And As what has... Wednesday, yeah. Last Wednesday. Congratulations. Wednesday. That's a big deal because we know that overwhelmingly statistics state that businesses usually fail within mm-hmm. their first five years. I mean, they usually fail within the first two years. Mm-hmm. And then about 50% of them start to fail after their first five years. What has been in, what has business been like for the last five years? Girl, loaded question. <laughs> um, <laughs> only... Only because, you know, when I felt like we were really starting to hit that momentum in the first year, we literally shut down. Like, I was, we were counting, waiting, saying, please just let us make it to one year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And then we made it to one year, and then we didn't come back to work for, you know, three months. Because, because of the, of the COVID. Sh- yeah, because yeah. Right. That's what I was going to say. Pandemic, surviving, yes. surviving the pandemic, too, is a, is a great fact. Yeah, because then it's like you okay. still have your clients and everything, but you have to take them at a different um frequency and mm-hmm. then you know the employees are not the same after a mm-hmm, while mm-hmm. so we just i feel like we went through it but eventually things started to come back together what mm-hmm. keeps you motivated in situations like that when things seem to be you know like everything seems to be wrong everything is going wrong nothing is going right mm-hmm. how do you stay motivated in order to keep it going like how do you like okay we're gonna make it one more year um, I mean, it's just the responsibility. I think mm-hmm. you have to, I know that I'm responsible for the lease and my, my team and the success of, you know, my business, my brand, my people, mm-hmm. the clientele, of course, um, friends, people that support you. Right? But we're not going to just, I'm not going to quit when y'all are not quitting. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that you said that because that is something that they also say, like surround yourself with people who know what you could be. Maybe not know everything, but they at least know some of the things that you are going through. And when you surround yourself with those type of people, like, all right, she's still doing it. I guess I got to do it too. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> of course. You know, we go and we have our, our venting session. Yes. Me and you. It's go to the class. library and talk instead of doing work. Um, what, who motivates you? Actually, before That's, we get yeah. into that, what made you decide that you wanted to open your own salon? I feel like life just pushed me there. You know, you get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like... This is what I this is what I do best, mm-hmm. and I think that I'm supposed to do it in a bigger capacity. Mm-hmm. And um, I also just really always wanted to encourage stylists, especially, um, to remember that you can have a thriving career. You can take care of your life and your family doing hair. Mm-hmm. You know, because <laughs> yeah. you know, you people don't always take it as seriously. Although we understand that it's one of the things that makes the world go around it's the beauty industry everybody gets their hair done i was just about to say stuff yeah like i feel like it's hard go ahead but i was gonna say but you're so much more than just doing here that's why i put it in quotation you know because you tell us let us know what else you're doing now and i want i'm I'm asking you like i know the things that you do but i want you to let everybody know because there are so many times that people are like do you know someone who can do this for me? And I'm like, Savage Roots, <laughs> Savage Roots, do it. So, yeah, like, let us know what, what you're doing, please. Because um, it's not just here. Right. Yeah, in addition mm-hmm. to here, like, in the salon, you mean? Yeah. Or yeah. just, okay. Ge- in, yeah. In general, mm-hmm. um, 
I mean, of course we do. Well, we specialize in natural hair, so mm -hmm. locks. Um, we don't have a braider right now. Please, anybody, if you know somebody that has an amazing talent that's looking for a new home, mm -hmm. salvage roots, okay? All right. We uh, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> because I what, 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 Oh, that is it natural hair braiding or is it braiding with extensions? Because that you know braiding with extensions. We would love to have a braider. Okay. Mm -hmm. More stylish. I would. I mean, I want to expand, but to mm -hmm. talk about what we do. Um, we provide experiences. Mm -hmm. It's a therapeutic, safe space. I, when I pray over my salon, I pray for it, it to be a sanctuary, if, for it to be a place of relief. And like when you walk through the door, you say, oh, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you forget that you're yeah. outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know where we at? <laughs> um, and now we sell, we're selling apparel. We, you know, I make my own products. Um, what kind of products? Oil. So I have two oils. Um, I had a whole big old line, but mm -hmm. I, I know they're mad at you right now because your beard balm is not there no more. Beard balm and beard oil. Uh, <laughs> Special request. <laughs> I made some beard oil for the holidays, mm -hmm. but um, and my whip butter that's gonna come back once I find a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Then I, I really that's that's the way I want to go. Mm -hmm. Um, and we we I used to make lock bombs in the kitchen, and mm -hmm. I found a manufacturer for that. So we do. What is it? Lock bomb? Yeah. The and lock what is bomb, a lock bomb? The lock bomb detox cleanse, trademarked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell them. <laughs> um, it is. Like the, you know, the ACV wa or yeah, wash that people do for locks. Mm -hmm. I tried to find it in a way that was like pH balanced yeah. mm -hmm. um, and safe for the hair because a lot of times when people mix that apple cider vinegar with the um, baking soda and everything on their own, your hair could be hard. And, mm -hmm. you know, that sounds like crack. Mm -hmm. Listen, okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to have locks to get one? No, you can. Oh. It's perfect for taking out weaves, like after you mm -hmm. take out weave, after braids. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, it just helps take out some of that build out. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it uh, build also up. help matting? No, not matting. No, not matting. But um, are do you, are you able to do that? I've been seeing videos of that, like yeah. people with matted hair, and they're able. You to You mean take like the freeform? So free then, I mean, they're pulling it apart and everything. But yeah. that is, they put that on top to take out all that buildup that was in mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't. I don't think it would. I mean, I don't do that. It could be. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But that's I've, been, a, I've been seeing those videos. That's too. a very that special rules. service because when I see people in there, they're like falling asleep. Mm. They're getting this nice soak. Like, I've been in there. Oh, I be in there. Um, and people are like, have a towel over their face. And they're just like, sleep. Knocked out while mm -hmm. somebody's doing their hair. Yeah. Um, it's a very beautifully aesthetic place where you go in and you do feel like you're in the spa. And that's what you have some plans for. Some big to increase and Ooh, do something. You know we're not talking about that. How did you, how <laughs> yeah. did you, how did yes. you get into hair? Um, Honestly... I started, I learned how to braid when I was 18. Mm -hmm. I just, it was something I always wanted to do and we would, just didn't have that in our family as like the braider, you mm -hmm. know? Like we always went to a hair salon or whatever. But I, then when I think back, when I was 14, I was trying to do my hair before like the first day of school, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I want twists. I want these little things, whatever. I want a bang. But I would like make my mother <laughs> sit there and braid, like let her, let, her um, let me learn how to braid. And then in college, I just, Ended up with a clientele by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. By the end of my four years, I had like a thriving clientele. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of just practicing, and then you know, people they like, Oh, you braid? What can you do? Relaxes? And I'm like, Child, we was doing box relaxes in the, <laughs> the dorms, you know? just for me. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I went to UMass Amherst and that well, I graduated from there, but mm -hmm. I um went to work for the attorney general's office and Within a few months, I was like, it's just not This is not me. me. Yeah, this I'm corporate. Yeah. And I'm going to go to hair school. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I got it. And how did, America. growing up in a West Indian family, you are West Indian. Yes. Um, what is your background? Okay. Bop, 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 bop. Shout out to all my Bayesians. <laughs> Yesterday I was well, she's, watching. She's, um, you know Danielle's Bayesian. Um, yes, absolutely. Shirley, Shirley Chisholm story. Yes. And she's supposed to be Bayesian and sound like a South African. And oh, I was like, where is this? Yeah, man. When the, when the movie started, I was like, what is this? What, what is, is this from? accent? Right. But then I had to do some history. She was only in Barbados from four to nine. So I'm not sure why oh, she had an accent. Yeah, she said something about her Bayesian roots at one yeah. point. And I was like, oh, is that what that is? Mm -hmm. That was weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How did your family take the fact that you wanted to be a hairdresser as a Bayesian American? You're supposed to be a doctor and a lawyer. 
Ooh, <laughs> I still sometimes, you know, I think my mom's watching this, so I don't want to say too much. <laughs> but I still sometimes think that they wonder. Mm-hmm. Um, they wonder, like, girl, why'd you go and spend that money? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But but you're being you you successful. Here. Literally, I had I remember being asked, why did you spend that money? Mm-hmm. If you knew you wanted to do hair, and I said I didn't. I. Right. Well, figured I it out yeah. Yeah. yeah i i got i came to this because of college you mm-hmm. know like mm-hmm. so and now it is this you know successful business are and you, there are, are the other happy things am i happy, are you happy? absolutely because yeah. i wouldn't have been i knew i just knew <laughs> i just knew early on that that wasn't the road for me mm-hmm. yeah what did you go to school for Legal studies and criminal justice. Wow. I opened. I opened up the. I opened up the LSAT book. I said, mm. yeah. <laughs> "This is not it." I'm gonna let somebody that loves the law yeah. <laughs> do that. Yeah. Uh, people want to know where your salon is located. 190 Washington Street, Dorchester, zero two one two one. You have to put that in. You know, there's plenty of Washington Streets in Boston. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't go to Brighton. I see <laughs> that you just came off your five year anniversary this weekend. How was that? Awesome. My was goodness, very last nice. week was. This week was a big one. Busy, mm-hmm. busy week, yeah. 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 And does it, do you, uh, what, what are your future plans? I know you because I'm your friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know that you have bigger plans where you don't want to just stop there. Mm-hmm. What do you see as your big vision for this? Because I don't believe, I hate the question like, what's your end game? Because yeah. who said I'm ending it? Uh-huh. You know, I'm just going to expand and somebody else is going to work there. Yeah. What's your end game? Where do you want to be? Um, I'm definitely going to be a, what do they call it when you have multiple businesses? Like a serial entrepreneur. A serial entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Because I do have multiple interests. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just um, really working on packaging Salvage Roots uh, as a brand that mm-hmm. can be replicated and can run without me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. that's like the main <laughs> Get me out of here. Right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's just, I mean, I love what I do and I love my clientele and mm-hmm. I love my team, but I also have really been telling myself and realizing that I see my value but, but like outside of the chair and outside of the yeah. salon. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I have to be able to be free enough to go to different events and mm-hmm. you know like Danielle has for years been telling me, gotta go here, you gotta go there. And I'm like, outside. girl, I'm at work. Danielle, <laughs> I'm at Danielle, work. <laughs> Networking <laughs> events. You know I don't oh. play with my networking oh. events. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yes, the networking events. Networking events. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I absolutely, next step is a spa. Before COVID, I tell people I wanted to have five salons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One, uh, Dorchester, Cambridge, Oakland, L.A., and Brooklyn. A beautiful three-story town. Don't steal my idea, actually. Um, (laughs) it's trademark Uh, (laughs) but right now i know that the next step is a salon and spa Uh i really want to get into just have a space where it's like first up spa connoisseur like that's my favorite thing to do is get a massage and go to a beautiful Mm -hmm. spa Uh zen music and all of that so that is number one but then place where you can get waxing lashes Mm -hmm. um med spa lashes we need that my sister's a nurse and she's hurry that up she's getting started (laughs) she's getting started to go the uh injectables route oh and what's I'm, that like fillers and yes stuff? Okay. i'm very very much a natural a natural lista you know <laughs> yeah. that i'm like no we need to fight fear and then i'm like girl so let's switch it up yes. a little bit um let's go into you're a vegan how long you've been a vegan four years we were just talking about this is why people become a vegan because mm-hmm. with chick-fil-a backtracking on they anti antibiotics um, we were like, see, this is people, why people go vegan. Why did you choose to go vegan? <laughs> I got to think of my answer. That's not the offense. No. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's not even offensive. I, I try to be the vegan that's not that, like. Don't yuck anybody's yum. Mur- fur is murder. Because you might, you know, you never know. You might see me in a fur. I don't know. No. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I really, a few years ago, so I've been vegan, full vegan for years, but I've been meatless. I think six years. Wow. How did um, you stop me? I started, because, you know, I used to, like, I loved going to steakhouses. If you're going on a date, you were taking me into a steakhouse. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a tour. But then eventually I would eat meat and I would eat steak and I'd be thinking, like, this is about to sit on the bottom of your stomach for a few days. Mm-hmm. Like an animal. 
Like, and I'm like, why would you be thinking that? You're enjoying this. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I just had to, like, my, my mind and my body was telling me something. My and I just started listening. <laughs> I just started listening. So then six months after I stopped eating red meat and pork. Yes, I ate pork because I'm Beijing. Um, <laughs> pork mouth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, then I stopped eating chicken and turkey. Mm -hmm. I held on to fish the longest. Cause you were pescatarian for a little while. This uh, and, and is that is pescatarian a healthy lifestyle? Like, do you uh, do you do you feel like a pescatarian is a healthy lifestyle, or you or you? I or feel just like it's a lighter lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think it was easier for me to hit protein goals and all that stuff when I ate like that. Yeah. But at the same time, I just want to say really quickly, in terms of diet, mm -hmm. um, why I say I'm not this crazy vegan is because I feel like you can get a balanced diet out of anything, mm -hmm. but you could also, same way that you could be a junk food vegan and you see I'm thick, I like to eat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like to eat. <laughs> so it's like, you just have to have your balanced diet. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't rely too much on a, a, a fish or shrimp heavy diet the same mm -hmm. way I wouldn't rely too much on a carb heavy diet. You know, yeah. like balance yeah. it. You have to have fresh vegetables and fresh juices or whatever mm -hmm. in any diet. So have you researched that. things like the Dr. Sebi diet or alkaline diets, anything like that? I have. Mm -hmm. I'm Which, not there. Yeah. You know, I yeah. have I have tried um, raw. I love the idea of it, yeah. but I'm very much the type of person when I put my mind to something and I start to see the benefits of it, I will stay that way. Mm. And I don't, I'm not committed enough. Yeah. I said, I'm already vegan. I'm already vegan. <laughs> yeah. Ross seems what else hard. You? And then and I wanted to touch back on something because you said you're not, you said you <laughs> might see me in a fur, right? So there's vegans who are like, <laughs> so you're, you, you follow a vegan diet. diet. Yes. Absolutely. Right. So that's just a, So you okay. cook a lot of mushrooms, stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of, I think she's asking like, um, yeah, like, so you might wear a fur and you might wear a good so pair yes, of mushrooms. So don't eat I don't wear, I won't wear fur. I, I joke, fur, but although fur. I love it. Yeah. But I'm but not the one that's- you might wear a bad, bad pair of leather boots. <laughs> <laughs> I might be that girl that's not doing that research on each thing going on Peter yeah. and seeing mm -hmm. what suitcase is leather. Right. Like I, I just don't have it, yeah. but my my diet is not flesh. And, that, and that's and that's the part, the hard part for me about being, a, about the vegan lifestyle is like, Yes, there are things that that absolutely like identify like this is vegan cheese or whatever mm -hmm. like that. But then th when there when it doesn't say that and you still want to try like the other sections of the supermarket, you have to know these labels unless you're eating, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables. But like other things that you want to try, you have to look at those labels and all that. And I'm like, I ain't yeah. got time for all that. There's a so, lot of <laughs> accidental accidental yeah. vegan yeah. products. Mm -hmm. Um I do I do maintain that and like if I cook it's definitely completely vegan. And right. speaking of cooking, this has been something that you have found a ta an extreme talent in is vegan cooking. Mm -hmm. That was I realized that that was my COVID outlet. Mm -hmm. I was home you and did that. and I <laughs> just combined thank you my like my photography and the you know video making and stuff. So Where, I'm sorry, I'm not to interrupt you. Where else are you from? Did you live somewhere else? Because I'm not. This is not a Bayesian accent. I don't have a Bayesian accent. Oh, but I was born yes. here. You was born here? It sounds Bayesian different, Bayesian. though. She's Bayesian American. Bayesian American. I'm Bayesian American. You have a very unique accent. No, don't say that. Because now I'm going to be trying to figure out what it is. No, it's just <laughs> unique. It's your own. You make oh, it your okay. own. Yeah. She's from Bobby Brown, Boston, with, <laughs> <laughs> with, with Bayesian not Donnie, parents. Not yeah. Donnie Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> from the South End. Uh, what would you suggest for people that want to get into vegans uh, for the first time? People that want to try something and, and then haven't, don't know, we're not too familiar with it. What would you suggest? Um, I don't do, so I don't recommend like, but, like I didn't do any type of documentaries or anything. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like when you do that, people go cold <laughs> turkey yeah. and they don't stay. Mm -hmm. I, I always suggest transitioning, start incorporating some stuff into your diet. Like if, most people already are eating a lot of vegan food that they don't know. It's so mm -hmm. crazy. Cause if you're eating a vegetable or a chip, it's vegan. Yeah. You know, so they'd be like, oh, gross, vegan food. I'm like, you eat it all the time. But transitions. I ain't, people, I ain't never it. had no vegan food. You Do ain't you never understand? had no vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> but just, you know, start, um, start transitioning, start substituting maybe like a, a vegan butter or whatever, you know, and start with the month. What uh, Jason would like to know, what is your go to vegan meal? I mean, oof. I mean, I all right. People love my fried mushroom, but my vegan rasa pasta is bomb. 
He can rust the pasta. Yeah. That sounds that nice. That sounds, that sounds nice. like an oxymoron. <laughs> I might have to bring that to spark that up one morning. The, it's not yeah. though because the rust is okay. Exactly. Love, That's very coconut true. milk in there. <laughs> if you if you've seen her um her food page, uh, plant it, based naughty. Uh, yeah, plant based naughty on Instagram. The food you cannot tell. <laughs> that it's that it's vegan. I mean, you're, you're watching the process, and it's like, ah, that looks like it's got meat in it. Yes, <laughs> and it looks very, very beautiful, beautiful. like yeah. very, very good presentation. Um, so that that all looks good. Go ahead and, and give your eyes a treat, and go ahead and look at that. It's it okay. sounds plant based, naughty. Yeah. It sounds like like these things have also helped you in mind clarity and things like that. Because you also now do Pilates, and Pilates is a rich white woman sport. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why I'm in there. How, you know, like, how has that transition be from, you know, working out every day, shout out to Six Fit, um, and then now do, being a Pilates instructor? How did you get into that? Um, so I still weight train. I just, you know, I, I weight train a little bit closer to home. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always wanted to try Pilates. I like, I love yoga. Like, I like different work different forms of exercise mm -hmm. and I'm realizing now that I might be an exercise person. Mm -hmm. How long I, did it take you to get there? Because that's oh what I'm trying gosh. to get back to. Well, you know, 75 hard. Mm -hmm. yes. 75 hard is what's I have to do that again. I did that 2021. Mm -hmm. and and you should do it now. Then, now, that I, now that I be outside, should. I am going to do that. Yeah. And it's warmer because when people try and to do it Don't you winter, lie, it's not that. warmer. But it's not winter. It's freezing. It's not going in the snow. But, um, <laughs> I always wanted to try it. I tried it, and I had a manifestation. I thought about it. I was like, I want to have a black-owned Pilates studio. Mm. And right when I said Ooh, that, they sent vegan email. food and, and a spa and, awesome. and Pilates in the back. <laughs> I'm, nobody's leaving there. <laughs> when, when they... um. When I said, when I thought that, they sent an email to the, you know, their clients, whatever, mm -hmm. saying that they were doing an apprentice instructor and that they would help cover half of your tuition. Oh. And so I tried it. And I'm gonna tell you, it was hard because my gosh, I already have a business. Like, mm -hmm. so to go and get a job and train <laughs> after work and hours and hours of doing that, like on your body, it was a lot, but I'm, I'm doing it now. I'm teaching four classes a week Ooh. and people really are responding <laughs> well to it. Yeah. And I just want to change the, the face of not Pilates, change, but yeah. add, add the black face back to Pilates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The black experience. Yes, the black experience. So. Right. I love it. Somebody you asked me yesterday. What? About Somebody Pilates? I was looking for a Pilates uh, instructor yesterday. Oh, mm -hmm. tell them she does mm -hmm. it. <laughs> <laughs> and where do you do Pilates at? C2 Body in Milton. In Lower Milton. Ooh. I don't really tell people that. <laughs> you need to That's know. Right. People need to know. That you got all kind rich. of clients here for food, I hair, know. and Pilates right now. <laughs> and that's why, and that's why I, you know. <laughs> you got I'm to like, be like, you can ask busy. Me. You can ask me. But yes, busy. Yes. I just, you know, I, I, I that's why I said I feel like I have a lot mm -hmm. in, in me. So I just try to be me. Yeah. And when I have an interest or something, I share it. Yeah. And what you respond to, you respond to. Yeah. I, I appreciate you for being here and for talking to us because there's so many people that have a lot of talent and they feel like they're only, they can only do one. And what we're seeing from you is that you can do it all mm -hmm. with good help, with mm -hmm. good support, with good understanding of who you are and what's going on and with some good mind clarity. Yeah. Um, tell us one more time exactly where you're located, how we can find you, how we can support things that you do. Um, yeah, give it, give us the full rundown. Can I touch on that really quickly before yeah. I say that? Um, the mind clarity. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you bring that up because in addition to everything else, there is absolutely a journey that mm -hmm. I'm on mm -hmm. in terms of mindfulness and um, self awareness and just really letting telling myself and reminding myself that I can do whatever mm -hmm. I can do it as well as I want to yeah. you know like right. I don't have to be stuck to one thing I don't have to be limited mm -hmm. I'm taking off the limits of that anybody's put on me or put on a business owner and I just am pushing forward and I want to I just want to Encourage everybody to really sit there, start with start your day with some peace and quiet. Some meditation, Tony meditation. Been doing that a lot these days. Your mind oh, yeah. clarity, yeah. and you set your day, mm -hmm. and you remind yourself that you are everything. Mm -hmm. You can do everything. You 
life can go amazingly for you. It does not have to go bad. Yep. It doesn't have to go bad. You don't got to be miserable like you me. You don't. Don't say that. <laughs> you don't have. You can be. You, you don't have to be miserable. Any of those things. It's what we tell ourselves mm-hmm. that a lot of times keeps us there. Yeah. So yeah. we could talk on that another time. But I love it. Positive energy. It sounds like that vegan food got you nice and balanced. <laughs> I'm trying to get like you. you get, listen. I'm about to balance myself out. <laughs> Go and, and working out and going outside mm-hmm. and you know all the things. I recommend 75 hard too. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Because when people try to have, like they say, what what one thing, it's not one thing. I went outside for every day for yeah. 75 days and I got fresh air and I got sunlight and I drank a gallon of water for every day. Mm. You know, like for 75 days. I read 10 pages. You have to read 10 pages of a book, of a self-help or entrepreneurial mm-hmm. book, you know. Um, you have to follow a diet. I, well, either way. All of those things together will take you to another level of consistency and of no excuses. You can fall back into another routine afterwards, mm-hmm. but really try it and or something to push yourself and to let yourself know that you could do whatever you put your mind to. Yeah. I am at 190 Washington Street, uh, Dorchester, 02121. Um, Website? Naughty Girls, at Naughty Girls on Instagram, at Salvage Roots, and at plant-based and naughty and we put all of that information in the comment section mm-hmm. so that you can take a look at it taquanda says i absolutely adore shanita <laughs> um, <laughs> schneider says 75 hard are you sure it's not a cult it's not a cult schneider <laughs> don't worry about schneider yeah. it's not a cult also, schneider they have they have 75 medium mm-hmm. and 75 don't do it. soft don't yeah. do it. Ones start off with the hard and then adjust as you go along mm-hmm. so no. that you can stay committed no mm-hmm. start don't. off with it and stick to it <laughs> Yeah. Stick to it. Count yourself to... in. Don't count yourself out. Oh, okay, motivational speaker. That's cute. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> don't embarrass you. Don't, people don't cheat yourself. From, street yourself. You have people live and watch from BIM. Oh, they watching all the way from Barbados. They said, they said, what accent is that? <laughs> <laughs> she ain't from here. <laughs> Janita, it was absolute pleasure to have you on. I'm just Thank talking about so all the different things. In. This is our Women History Month series, kicking it off with Shanita Clark out of uh, Salvage Roots here in Beauty. It's located again at... 190 Washington Street, Four Corners. Yes, Four Corners. You got to make an appointment. So go right on the web page and look at read, read first, and then book an appointment at least a consultation. Go and visit it. Go say hi. Big shout outs to you for being a presenter at the Extraordinary Women <laughs> and for receiving the award last year. Thank and you. for all of your accomplishments, it is an honor to be your friend. So I'm really, really excited to see what you do and how you continue to motivate us. Jasmine said, Hi, and she said she learned so much about Shanita. You are an inspiration, babe. Thank you. And with that said, we're going to slide on over. We're going to do another commercial break, and we'll come back. We'll get into some quick, quick entertainment news because we are up against the clock. Spark FM Online, number one for urban and Caribbean music. We'll be right back. In the morning with Miss Hot Sauce, Miss Tony, and Rockstone Triss. The only thing that does matter is great music, and you will find it here. The all-new Spark FM. The war on drugs has harmed millions of people and disproportionately subjected black and brown communities to criminalization and incarceration, disrupting access to resources, education, and support. To learn more about Massachusetts policies and programming, ensuring the legal cannabis industry is equitable and positively impacts communities harmed by marijuana prohibition and enforcement, visit masscannabiscontrol.com slash equity. Want to give your baby a head start? Get the best protection against flu and COVID-19. Because their immune system isn't fully developed at birth, Babies need additional protection. When you get vaccinated while pregnant, it can keep you and your baby from getting sick. As they get older, this can result in more time in school and daycare for them and more productive time at work for you. Vaccines are safe and effective for children as they grow. No matter where you are on your pregnancy journey, flu and COVID vaccines can boost your and your baby's natural defenses and protect your family. 
Stay up to date with your vaccines. Stay healthy. Talk with your trusted health care provider today. Brought to you by the Boston Public Health. Finally Home is a must-read, step-by-step guide that will equip any first-time home buyer with the knowledge they need to confidently make informed decisions. This book provides answers in simple and clear terms to most, if not all, of the questions you may have about credit, home ownership, and generational wealth. Finally Home equips the reader with the confidence to be engaged with the home buying process without feeling vulnerable or exploited. Taylor Made Real Estate Easy is not just a catchy hashtag. It is real estate agent and radio personality Taylor Andre's goal. A goal to simplify one of the most challenging processes you will go through as an adult. A goal to educate you properly on credit and teach you the strategies to finding the home of your dream. It is not just a good book or an easy read. It is the secret to a seamless home buying experience. New Spark FM. Spark FM. Spark FM. Young chick, a man be ballin'. Be chick pigeon toe. Some of them be crawling. Spark FM. Oh my gosh. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. 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 When we outside it's a ocean of love All that we align up to the stars up above Let we dance now, take a chance now with me
When he comes here, I'm going to sing background for him, and I bet you guys going to support me. I don't think he's going to allow you on the stage. You don't know. <laughs> by, by, by the stage. I'm going to bring my own microphone as well. So he own, my own karaoke machine. <laughs> All of it I'm bringing by myself. Um, let's get into the entertainment news. We got about six minutes left, so let's break this down. Let's run through this. Um, What is this? Bianca Sensori Sensori covers up in fur for dinner with Kanye West and North. She's an AI industry plant, right? We're mm. we're we've we've concluded that, right? That yeah, she she's, is she's not right she's in the head. Not, she and she, or she's being held under duress. Yes. And I'm surprised to see her with so this is the most clothes that she has ever oh my been goodness, pictured with. She's ever. Dressed? Kanye West, she probably has zero anything on underneath that. Yeah. Kanye West's wife, Bianca Sensori, and get in a shocking cover-up Saturday. It's a damn shame when your cover-up is shocking. Saturday night, hiding her body under a fur coat, presumably because they were clowning, uh, chowing down with Northwest. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Probably Yay, Bianca and her 10-year-old daughter hit up Nobu, and BC arrived in a full furry coat and leggings to boot. North was into the t- North was into the attention as they arrived, smiling at paparazzi. Kanye and Bianca, not so much. And this is what she had on underneath, which was absolutely entirely nothing. Oh, nothing. that's what she had on under. It looks so. Oh no, this was back in uh, February twenty four. Uh-huh. Bianca's fit is in sharp contrast to what she has not been wearing lately, namely clothes. Um, she stopped shopping dead in her tracks a few days back, wearing very little as they grabbed some grub at the Cheesecake Factory at the Grove Hall in L.A. What? Kanye go to the Cheesecake That's Factory? That's for And then you women feel like y'all can't get taken to the Cheesecake Factory? Kanye's even taking his wife to the Cheesecake Factory because the Cheesecake Factory got good food. This Kim Kardashian has been interacting with Bianca a few events lately and maybe KK got her in her hair. I don't think so. I think that this girl just likes to be naked because she's told that she's not allowed to but wear clothes. look at clothes. that outfit right there where she has on that big uh, drawers. Mm, yes. And then... <laughs> it does seem like she wears a lot of tidy whitey nude see-through drawers all the time. Like, I feel like that's her aesthetic. And then you this know one here from Mark 7... And what does he wear the same thing every time? Yes. Oh. Uh, the problem I have with this is that Kanye has made it very public that he is a porno addict. Mm, a, I see. I didn't know yeah, that. he's addicted to porn. So, you know, the way that you're dressing your wife and then you're addicted to porn just don't go well with me, man. Mm-hmm. Just some sick, It seems like some da- some S&M type of it ish, is, you know, sick. like it's weird. It's very, very weird. Playboy Cardi fans react as he shows off a new look. Um, what do you look like before? No, oh, is this Playboy Cardi? Never seen him before in my life. He used red to have dreads. dreads before. Oh, red, did red. he? Weren't they red dreads? Yeah, he looked. Oh, okay. So yeah, he does definitely look different. Oh, that's a myth. He uh, play that, play that. Let me <laughs> see what he looks. <laughs> MF right, looked wow. like Wednesday Adams. <laughs> <laughs> he do look he like Wednesday. Little, like, you know, <laughs> Very oh, interesting. He got two little plaits and a, and a bang. The controversial rapper took to Instagram Live on Friday, March 22nd, to show off straight black, jet black hair, which had been parted down the middle and styled into two long <laughs> braids that went down the side of his face and onto his chest. Oh, he looks so beautiful. Somebody said he looked like Saka Joya. What Playboy Cardi sing, Justin? Oh, man. What do you He got a couple of songs with like little Uzi and stuff. You know, mm. um, interesting. Mm. He looked oh, like a little yeah. girl. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he got piercings yeah. in his cheekbones and two in his nose. He's got a little crazy mustache and a little goatee. Oh, <laughs> poor. The baby negotiates cuts with sm- with Smoke Shop after discovering products with his face on them. The baby was discovered uh, has discovered a collection of Mary Jane friendly prod- products with his face on him, and he wasn't going to allow them to be sold without getting his fair share of licensing fees. In an Instagram Live video posted on Saturday, the Suge rapper stopped by an unidentified smoke, smoke shop to confront the owner about paraphernalia that featured his likeness. We gotta discuss this man, he said in the video. What this is, bruh? Well, I need my percentage. You gotta give me one for free or something. After discovering that one that one such bit of paraphernalia was retailed for forty nine ninety nine, he remarked that the owner needed to give him four ninety nine or ten percent of each sale. To which the shopkeeper agreed. Mm-hmm. Well, that's how you're supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. That is exactly how you're supposed to do. It. If you're gonna use my name and my likeness, four ninety nine. Every time y'all sell one, put four ninety nine to the side for me. Open it. What y'all got in here? 
Oh, these niggas. Oh, they, what, y'all don't went too far. What's in it? What is Hold it? Hold on, bro. It's a gift. Really? It's gotta be. Come shout with my boys at where you at? Uh, East Ponce Deleon Avenue, man, in Decatur, Georgia. Right, Come yeah, 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 that's how you. That is, that is exactly what you gotta you, you be doing. You could have just took everything out there. Mm-hmm. You could have yeah. just said, "Give me everything that got my face on it." Maybe, I like could, that. He, could he do that? I think so. Perhaps. Like this? Yeah, using this. I mean, he could do that. He could just tell them that. It, I don't think that he can do. He would have to go through all the things, mm-hmm. but he could have just told them that he has to cease and desist, cease and, and they desist, can't do yeah. anything yeah. else. Yeah. Um, the baby uh, offset does a surprise meet and greet with kids who won Black History, uh, who won a Black History essay contest. That's sweet. Nice, offset. offset has done a surprise meet and greet with five children in Detroit, Michigan, who won an essay contest by writing about a book about Black History. And I like when celebrities do sweet things like that for the children. And last but not Offset least, and Cardi still apart? Yes, I believe so. Okay. I think they occasionally have a little sexy time together, oh, but yes, you know, other sexy. than that, you know, it's well, for the, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta stick to what you know. Well, something sometimes mistakes come with good deals. Absolutely. <laughs> Rebel Wilson says Borat star Sacha Baron Cohen bullied her with lawyers after she revealed plans to expose a male star in her memoir. Was it? Was she exposing him? I don't. It, it seems like it's not him that she was exposing. He just he just decided to bully her, and I believe that because oh. Borat, that Borat person, seems like like an a hole, right? Yeah, like a complete one. Sasha Baron. Yeah. yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, Rebel Wilson claimed that Sasha Baron Cohen threatened her with lawyers over her memoir. She previously teased that her book would criticize the behavior of someone she worked with. Wilson and Cohen stared in the 2014 action comedy, the comedy The Brothers Grimby. Um, and Pitch Perfect star Rebel Wilson claimed that Sasha Baron Cohen used lawyers to threaten her over her upcoming memoir, Rebel Rising, after she said she was exposed to expose a male co-worker. I think that she's also uh, she's done a lot of work with his wife too I think so that would be you know like a, a unfortunate for that to be. What is his who's his wife? The little redhead one that was in um, Red and Crashers the little redhead one that was at Oh yeah, yeah that's, that's her? Wife. Really? Yeah. 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 Okay that's pretty cool I didn't know that Yeah. this is a this is a, well I think Sasha needs to stop it. He does um, I would not be bullied or silenced by high-priced lawyers or PR crisis managers. The a-hole that I'm talking about is in one chapter of my book is Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, oh it is him. so she is dropping that it was him, oh. and that's why he's threatening her. It's too late, Mr. Sasha. All of this threatening is not going to do any good, and now people are going to run to buy her book to find out what exactly he did do. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Anyhow, people, that concludes our show for today. Yo, you know that with the money, start living like they do Vita Broca. Never seen him look so homely. Oh, Kanye. Oh, Kanye, 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 Kanye. Yeah, he looks awful. Kanye also looks like he don't bathe. He does look dirty. He look like he don't care about Yeah, me. he don't even Nathan. put nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so sad, too. Yeah. Uh, it's very... With that said, people, we're going to go to the side, slide onto the side. Uh, Spark uh, Spark FM Online, number one for urban and Caribbean music. Bobby Steels is up next, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Good. The only thing that does matter is great music, and you will find it here. The all-new Spark FM. 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 The war on drugs has harmed millions of people and disproportionately subjected black and brown communities to criminalization and incarceration, disrupting access to resources, education, and support. To learn more about Massachusetts policies and programming, ensuring the legal cannabis industry is equitable and positively impacted